Hello everyone, so today we have the lecture um, first part of the lab and it is about the um, forensic DNA fingerprinting. So what we are going to talk about is first of all that we are going to use the kit, special kit, uh, with all mm, needed materials and substances supplied with this kit. So uh, first of all to understand the the lab, we'll need to talk about the DNA structure, then the restriction analysis. Uh, after that, we're going to talk about the agarose gel electrophoresis, uh, how the molecular weight uh, is determined according to the uh, samples that we obtain in the end of the gel electrophoresis. Of course, the practical part is the simulation of DNA fingerprinting, and also we will need to talk about the plasmid mapping. So what is the fingerprinting um, of DNA? So we identify some sample of DNA somewhere and we want to um, to determine the owner of this, of this DNA. So let's say that it is again the crime scene. So we found the DNA samples like uh, follicles of hair or skin parts etc and we also have some suspects and from these suspects we can obtain the uh, DNA samples and then compare them to the crime scene so what we do we use the uh, restriction enzymes to identify the mm, fragmenting of DNA samples and if they are so let's say this is the crime scene and here we, we have the suspect suspect 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So let's say that suspect 3 has actually the same pattern of fragments on the gel. Okay, So it will tell you that the suspect 3 um, has the same fragmentation of DNA as the person from the crime scene. And based on this mm, analysis, we can firmly say that, okay, so the, th the third suspect is actually the person who was on this uh, crime scene. So what else we could do? We could do the relatedness of uh, humans. And let's say that some people, they want to identify the father of the child. So identification of the paternity. Same goes for uh, animal relatedness, uh, also the uh, analysis of DNA samples from distant ages. So let's say that we found bones and we could collect some DNA from it and we want to, uh, to say if it is human or not. Of course, by doing this restriction enzyme um, analysis, we could identify the uh, species uh, for this for this bone. Also, we could um, perform the research on disease-causing organisms, and in this case, uh, usually we are talking about the viruses and bacteria. What else? We could f identify the uh, the source of food. So let's say that some person wants to know if they actually eat beef. So they send this food for this identification and then uh, according to the animal relatedness they obtain the results saying okay so this is beef or not. Of course human remains work uh, the same as anthropology studies so you identify uh, if the remains of the organisms are actually belonging to humans. And the monitoring of transplants, of course, now we have uh, better, mm, better, un better methods to uh, monitor the transplants. But before we could obtain them, we were using mm, the RFLP mm, method very widely in transplantation. Okay, so uh, during this lab, today's lab, we are going to talk about the restriction digest. Uh, of the DNA, then we are going to talk about the DNA fingerprinting and RFLP analysis. After, after that we are 
touching the electrophoresis and it is going to involve the agarose gel. So agarose gel is usually performed with the samples of nucleic acids. So RNA and DNA I usually go with the agarose gels. Finally, um, we are going to perform the analysis and the interpretation of the results. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the um, composition of uh, nucleic acids, and in this case, the deoxyribonucleic acids. So, as you all know, we have base pairs, and the pairing uh, happens according to the hydrogen bonds formed between the nucleotides. The pairing happens in the way A to T, and we have two hydrogen bonds, and G to C with three hydrogen bonds. Of course, because we want to show it um, in a simpler way, we usually write A to T and G to C without showing uh, the two hydrogen bonds and three hydrogen bonds here. So here is the, um, the formula and the spatial formula. So here you can see the phosphate, the uh, deoxyribose, and the nucleotide itself. And we have cytosine and guanine here. So they are forming these three bonds between uh, the hydrogen and oxygen here, hydrogen and nitrogen here, and hydrogen and oxygen here. And if we are talking about the timing and adenine, they form only two. So here you can see the H being attracted to uh, oxygen and uh, hydrogen from the second uh, hydrogen bond is attracted to the nitrogen here. Uh, we have already talked about the composition of DNA in chromosomes on the genes in a bottle uh, laboratory. Uh, so again, the chromosomes are the DNA molecules wrapped around the histones. And here you can see these proteins, histones. And the DNA, if you unwind it and make it uh, the tether-like structure, so it's on only the secondary uh, conformation, it will look like uh, this tether. DNA will be wrapped around these uh, histogen bits. Okay, then they will form the chromatids, and the chromatids will form the chromosome. Okay, so what are the restriction enzymes or restrictases? Uh, they are coming from the bacteria and why it uh, evolved in the bacteria? Because they don't have, since they are the uh, unicellular organisms, they don't have immunity to the invaders. So they produce the and uh, the fan system themselves. So every single uh, bacteria bacterion produces the mm, the uh, defense system themselves. So in this case, we are uh, in need to protect ourselves against the viruses. So here we have bacteriophage, and this bacteriophage in injects the DNA. So through this. Um, injection, the viral DNA gets into the uh, into the cell, but if the bacterion has already started the production of restriction enzymes or endonucleases, this viral DNA will be cut in different places, and in this way the the um, bacterion is saved from the invasion. For now, we have over 3,000 known enzymes working as the restrictases. So here you can see the endonuclease and endo means that if you have the DNA molecule or RNA molecule, endo means that the cut will happen somewhere uh, in the middle, not in the middle but away from the edges, okay? So we have edge here and here. So anywhere between these edges is called endo inside. If you have the 
digestion from the edges edge. so let's say that cut happens here then here and it goes on which means that uh, the the enzyme comes and bites the pieces of the DNA it will be called exonuclease okay so we have the special uh, sites of recognition and these sites of recognitions are specifically recognized by the uh, restrictases and if we take the um, ECOR RI so this is the one that we're going to use it will identify the site which goes GAA TTC and if you look at the complementary um, complementary strand you will see that it is actually the uh, the palindromic sequence so it goes GAA TTC so in this case we will have um, the so-called palindrome and it is repeated palindrome and the enzyme will cut it um, not with the blunt ends uh, we will have the sticky ends here so we will have overhangs on one of the strands if the 5 prime is uh, shorter than the 3 prime end of this fragment then it's called 5 prime overhang so for ECORI we are producing the 5 prime overhangs hangs Okay, so these sites of recognition, they are called restriction sites, okay? And as I said in the previous part, we are producing the, uh, the 5 prime overhangs. So if the 5 prime end is shorter than the 3 prime end, it's called 5 prime overhang. In contrast to the ECORI, we have the PST1 and PST1 produces the three prime overhangs and the sequence is CTG CAG so if you create the palindromes it will be CTG CAG so it goes the same in both directions okay so the source of these enzymes of course uh, the e core RI is Escherichia coli PST1 is the Providencia Stuarti and we are going to use these two enzymes in our lab so what else you should know about these uh, restrictases analysis and it is about the buffer the restriction buffer and this buffer creates the special conditions for these restrictases to work and uh, for that we will need the sodium chloride which creates the ionic strengths and the ionic strengths uh, along with the pH produces the special mm, conditions required for the best conformation of the enzymes and the magnesium in this case so the the ion of magnesium it is the cofactor of the enzyme so without magnesium the enzyme will not get the shape that is required for mm, for the restriction mm, function so let's say that without magnesium it looks like that but if we add the um, the ion of magnesium it will change the conformation and now it could actually cut the DNA at the restriction sites okay so what else you should know about it uh, about the um, restriction itself or digestion that is that we need the special temperature in in the case of ECORI and PST1 restrictases we need uh, 37 degrees of Celsius. Uh, why? Because it is optimal body temperature um, of the 
uh, Escherichia coli, they live in the colon, so that's why they are having the optimal temperature range, which is mm, very close to 37 degrees. If we have uh, too high temperature, the enzyme might undergo the denaturation, or in other words, it's killed so because it cannot perform the, um, the functions. If it's not high enough, uh, so the temperature is low, we have the low activation of the enzyme, so the uh, functions will be very slow and the, the restriction will not happen in the in all possible restriction sites. So, of course, in this case, we will require much longer digestion time. Okay, now let's talk about the restriction fragment length polymorphism, or shortly R RFLP. So, what is polymorphism? Morphos means shape. Poly means different or a lot of. So, in this case, we're talking about a lot of fragments. So, let's say that we have the... Uh, the gene uh, in one person and allele 1 has the uh, sequence that could be cut by PST1 okay in, on the allele 2 we have the sequence that has point mutation and it's, it's not critical and this point mutation does not allow the function of the PST1 so instead of AT we have CG here and of course the PST1 will not cut the DNA here so what happens on the uh, site restriction site of the ECORI let's say that we have the same sequences uh, that will be allowing the action of ECORI so what happens here as the result of this cut we will have short then we will have long one and again we will have short one so this one will be the restriction site of PST1 and this is ECORI okay so the, mm, the allele one produced three different pieces the allele 2 will produce one long and one short. So this is the eco RI restriction site. And of course we have two fragments and three fragments here. So if we are doing the gel electrophoresis here, we will have different mm, number of uh, of fragments obtained uh, with the same restrictases. As you can see here, uh, so for the second allele we will have one long part and of course because it's long it did not travel much from the well so this is well and the distance it traveled is related to its size. So what happens to the second part? Uh, it is very short and it travels a lot okay so it it get um, very far from the well so if we take the allele 1 fragments we will have the same part on the right end and of course it's in here and also we will have the parts two parts that are cut and they should be uh, smaller than the long part of the allele 2 and of course we see it here so if you imagine the bond here it will be the same bond as this long piece but because we have the cut somewhere here on the allele 1 it will create two smaller fragments and this is the polymorphism or different uh, fragmentation of the of the genes the marker lane here shows the kind of standard of the um, cuts 
and of course if you take the the DNA content in the well at the beginning of electrophoresis we will have different sizes of of the DNA here and we will be able to compare them to our samples, DNA samples, cut by the restrictases. So here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 uh, different size fragments of DNA. Okay, this is the end of today's lecture and for the next week's lab we'll have a short lecture related to the plasmid mapping and the uh, gel electrophoresis.